It's been five seasons and three head coaches since the Knicks last made the postseason. The post-Carmelo era got off to a rocky start last year as the Knicks racked up 53 losses, not including their franchise player, Kristaps Porzingis, who went down in February with a torn ACL. Porzingis won't be available for the start of the David Fisdale era, which begins with questions about the point guard, an intriguing rookie in Kevin Knox, and the rapt attention of New York's rabid fans. What to expect from the next phase of the rebuild in the Big Apple next. Hi again, everybody. We're in a New York state of mind. Ten points on the Knicks. What you need to know about the Knickerbockers ahead of the 18-19 season. Here with Drew Gooden, former Nick, Greg Anthony. I'm Matt Weiner. Good to have you with us. Point number one, guys, uh, was pretty easy. It's the condition of number six. Kristaps Porzingis, who tore the ACL in his left knee February 6th. No real estimate at this point on when he'll be available, in part because the injury is so unusual for somebody of his size and his frame at 7'3". But uh, if you're a Knicks fan, what can you reasonably expect and hope for from Porzingis this season? I mean, how much more bad news can Knicks fans actually have right now at this point? Um, not having him available will be a death blow to start the season off, especially for Coach Fizdale coming in for his first year. So I think that's big, that, that our antenna's up right now as Knicks fans and the organization around Porzingis. I, no doubt about it. I, I do think you want to be cautious with him in terms of his uh, rehab, but ultimately, he's still the face of the franchise. Uh, he, your hopes are going to be pinned on him, and in the Knicks fan base with what they've gone through, you know, this millennium, I think they're willing to be patient. I think also there's excitement because of they did a great job with this new regime with the draft. Kevin Knox looks to be the real deal. Uh, getting the big kid Robinson, who has a chance to be an impact player in a couple years. Uh, is huge for them. And so I think they have the pieces. Fisdale, I think, is the perfect coach for that culture. Uh, I, I think more importantly, in a weird way, it, it could be good if he's not around until, say, January because you're going to allow some of these other guys and get a sense of who they really are. Uh, sometimes when you play with a great player, and I think Porzingis has kind of established himself as a great player, it can mask – deficiencies of others mm -hmm. and now with him not being there we're going to get a chance for the Knicks uh, front office to really evaluate these guys you know is Neil Aquina going to be ready to take the next step you brought in Moutier and Burke and all these other guys you know you, you're going to get a chance to get a sense of who are the guys we're going to build around moving forward because they got a lot of cap space in the, in the upcoming offseason and this is going to be a critical year I think for them to really start to put the foundation together for a run in the future. Well, you know how New York works in the New York media. They're, they're going to look at every angle of this story. One of the angles in terms of Porzingis is the contractual situation with him being eligible for an extension worth $157 million. All indications at this point are that the Knicks will probably wait and deal with that next summer, but that's that's a thing that's something to watch. Well, I, I tell you another thing. I think Porzingis' camp wants to wait. Right. Because he's been there now. This is his third year. And he's dealt with a lot of futility. And he needs to find out if he has trust in that organization as to whether or not they can build a contender. So, you know, I don't think it's just the narrative that the Knicks want to wait. I think Porzingis' camp wants to find out if this is going in the right direction, right? I mean, he's got a new coach this year, right. a new GM, a lot of new teammates, but still not a lot of wins to look forward to this season. So if I'm him, I think he's pretty well established that he's going to be a max guy. I want to find out what my options are moving forward before I'm ready to commit long term to that organization. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to the flip side as the management and what they're thinking. I know Porzingis Camp is thinking one way of strategically placing him in the best situation possible. But I think before Por Porzingis went down, I think one of the biggest question marks were can he stay healthy? Yeah. Right. And we all talked about that. And then when he actually, when it became reality when he got hurt, I mean, that was a death blow to the organization. So now I think they're kind of looking, hey, you're going to wait and see how much money you're going to sign for later on next summer. But, hey, we actually got to see if you can bounce back from this injury, A, and let alone stay healthy to play through that contract. So I think from a management point standpoint, there's a magnifying glass on Porzingis this year. It's interesting. If he comes back and he can play it all one way or the other, the money's going to be there yeah. for him sooner or later for Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, the Knicks say KP has been involved in practice, even if he's not on the floor. And 
He and the rest of the team get a feel for their new head coach, David Fisdale, who comes with championship pedigree from his days as a Miami assistant and already his own signature soundbite. We don't get the respect that these guys deserve because Mike Conley doesn't go crazy. He has class and he just plays the game, but I'm not going to let them treat us that way. You know, I know Pop's got pedigree and I'm a young rookie, but they're not going to rook us. That's unacceptable. That was unprofessional. My guys dug in that game and earned the right to be in that game, and they did not even give us a chance. Take that for data. <laughs> One of my favorite clips. Uh, never gets old. <laughs> no. Fisdale was hired to replace Jeff Hornacek, who is out after a couple of years in New York. And it's been a bit of a revolving door at Madison yes. Square Garden over the last few years or decade or so. What, what can Fizz do to stabilize things and get this thing on the right track? I think, first of all, they did a great job of finding the right coach for the culture and what's going on right now in New York. I think uh, he did a tremendous job in Memphis with those guys. It was a short term there, but I think uh, coming back in New York, he'll, be, he'll have a chance to really redeem himself with the younger team. You know, he's, he used the phrase of not being rook, but he's going to be going through a lot of that yeah. this season with this young team with referees and, uh, and not gaining that respect, especially from New York fans. So I think he's coming in as the coach that they wanted, and I think he's going to do a great job with this group. Yeah, and, and you know, look, I thought he got shafted in, in Memphis. He should not have been fired. Uh, I, I think he did in his short tenure prove that he is, you know, worthy of being a head coach, and I do think he brings the right mindset, the personality uh, to that group. And for the first time in a long time, the Knicks got their first choice. You know, they got the guy they wanted to, right, to, to right. lead this, this resurgence. And I think what's really going to be important is the system he devises and, and, and puts in place. Remember, this team went through the triangle, yep. then the quasi-triangle, then the <laughs> rectangle, you know. Lots of, other, lots yeah. of shapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, what, what's the identity going to be? You know, getting Kevin Knox, who I think has got a chance – I mean, if those two guys, he and Porzingis, are able to reach their potential, man, you talk about a hell of a tandem at those bookends on the wing position with their overall versatility. So, I mean, they've got, again, a reason to be optimistic moving forward. And if he can develop the backcourt, if he can develop that bench and, and create an identity there where these guys have an expectation to win, you know, coaching is critical in terms of instilling confidence into a young core group, which they are. So he's going to have a challenge, but, boy, I tell you, it's one he's going to welcome because if you can win there, boy, it, it's going to be special for he uh, and that Nick fan base right now that is salivating for anything positive. Well, and they love what they've seen out of Knox so far, Knicks fans. He was the number nine overall pick. Great in Summer League. I know it's Summer League, but first team all Las Vegas Summer League. Averaged 21 a game in his short time there. Does he have star potential? Yes. And if you just go back a year prior, remember there was another guy that was great in summer league, playing for the Jazz now that, you know, ended up turning out pretty well in Donovan Mitchell. And I, I think, yeah, I think that Kevin Knox in a lot of ways can have that kind of impact because he's already got a defined skill set. He's got the athleticism. With his size and length, he can play on the perimeter. Uh, and he's going to embrace the moment. I, I think this is a young man that has a chance to be uh, a cornerstone of a franchise. Now, 19 years old, youngest kid I think that was in the draft. Uh, it's gonna. It might be a couple years before he's ready to have the kind of impact we saw from, say, Donovan Mitchell. But I do think they know that this kid's got a chance. That's why I think there's a lot of excitement and some anxiousness to see him alongside Porzingis to see how they can complement one another. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot of pressure on a young fella getting drafted in New York. Uh, I heard Zeke. On one of the shows, say he has him for rookie of the year, you know, and he's, <laughs> and he's gonna it's gonna be a tough road to get rookie of the year in, in the Knicks organization. But let me tell you, he's gonna have an opportunity to play. I like him. He was a co -fresh, uh, freshman of the year last year in the SEC. Uh, he has length. I think the sky's the limit for him. Um, he kind of reminds me of Otto Porter, but I think with a better jump shot at a younger age. So uh, he has an opportunity, I think, not to be rookie of the year, but be a good rookie. Well, and if he gets the fans on his side, that's a win, right? In and he New will. York, and there's no reason to think he Porzingis did it. Remember, they booed that's Porzingis exactly right. on draft night, and he ended up winning them over pretty handily. We're going to build this team the right way, and we're not, what we're not going to do is trade away assets to get a guy that we could go get on our own later. 
Steve Mills at a town hall saying the Knicks are playing the long game. Whether they end a playoff drought Man, or they've not. They've been playing a long game for a long time. It's a long time. It's a long, long yeah. game. I like Very it. long. I like it. Hashtag rotten apples. It's like, a, <laughs> it's like cricket in India, right? The matches can last a yeah. week or two. It's yeah, a long, cool. long that game. That is a good point. Uh, they're set up to make plays for one of the A-list free agents available next summer with cap room ahead. Mm -hmm. Do you buy this? Are, are, are they going to be patient? The media, the fans, everybody's going to be, you know, the, there are limits to the patience in New York. Yes, and, and I would say this. First and foremost, they've had cap space before, but they have yet to sign an A-list free agent. Right. So, you know, you can preach that, and that works in that room right now. But ultimately, you better develop some young talent like the Lakers did. They, they showed a game plan to LeBron, and they had young players that he felt had a chance to be something. That's what's got to happen for the Knicks this year. In order to particip really participate in free agency, You've got to have guys, a core foundation that those other guys want to come play with. Right. Otherwise, you're going to end up paying guys like Tim Hardaway Jr. a lot of money and, and players like that. But you're not going to get that guy that you're going to look for in free agency. You can't just say, hey, look, we're New York. No. Come on. No, we're New York and we have money. Come play here. You can't do that because going to New York, if you do take a lot of money, ask Joe Kim Noah. It comes with a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a lot of stress in New York. And... I don't think they're just in a position right now to attract free agents uh, at this particular moment. Like GA said, you have to show promise. If I'm a, a, a top restricted, excuse me, unrestricted free agent looking at teams, I want to have something that's attractive. I don't want all the, you know, I don't want all the pressure on me. I need somebody there with me. I know it's promising that we have a chance to honestly win. I don't want to wake up every morning on page six and read about me in a negative manner. So you not only have to be prepared to take that as a free agent, but you have to have something promise, mm -hmm. promising in New York. All right, the Knicks won 29 games last season. We're setting their over-under mark at 28 right now. Do they win more or fewer than 28 games? A fewer, fewer. I mean, starting with Porzingis, not active, and uh, waiting on this timetable, if he even returns this season. So it's going to be a lot, a lot less. I'm going to say over they're going to get 29. 29? I, I think they win 29. So this is the part yeah. where we just say everything opposite <laughs> yeah. of each other? No, I, I, they're not going over by much. Well, your under could be 27, so. Yeah, that's true. That's, okay. That's well, okay. Different. Well, you said by not I that I want much. to qualify right, mine. Okay. I ain't want to. Right, so, I'm saying 29. <laughs> in either case, more patience required yeah. in the Big Apple.